Hi! Welcome to the State of Decay 2 stream. Uh, I'm your host, Jeffrey Card, and these nice people over here are named Eric and Brandt. Hey! <laughs> so Eric Anderson is a software engineer on um, the Q Choose Your Own Apocalypse uh, update that is on its way out. Uh, it's coming on the 26th, and he's here to chat with us about that while Brant plays the game. Yeah, or I'll just mock Brant. Either way. You can, uh, either way, <laughs> it's it's a full-time job. I know what my preference would be, but <laughs> I'll leave it up to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Eric, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your background, just how you got into games, and uh, just who you are? Oh, geez. Uh, I mean, I, I started... Uh, Game development, I guess, back in in high school. Uh, oh, wow. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, and then uh, a friend of mine uh, mentioned, uh, "Hey, I saw this article in Nintendo Power about uh, a school opening up in Washington that teaches game development." Oh, um, right. And I'm like, dude, I love games. <laughs> <laughs> that works out perfectly because I don't know what else I would like to do. Because um, like before that, I just thought I don't know sorcerers made it with black magic. I didn't know how. Games. I'm like, oh, that's a that's an option. Um, so like that was a no duh. Um, so yeah, so I came out here for DigiPen, um, and then went to college, um, doing the uh, the Bachelor of uh, Real Time Interactive Simulation degree or whatever that is. It's basically a computer science degree. Um, <laughs> but preparing you specifically to be a gameplay program. But it was specifically, yeah, for, for games and interactive uh, media in general. Um, but, uh, yeah, a lot of it was, like, taught by, like, industry professionals and, like, yeah, whatnot. It was, it was really cool. Professionals. Professionals. Um, like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you are, you are a gameplay programmer. Which yes. is, is it, how, how, I mean, how is that different from... Yeah, like, and, like... Like here, it's a little different. We're all, I guess, generalist programmers, at yeah. least right now, um, for the most part. Um, where we kind of do a bit of everything, um, because we kind of do like we, we get features and we kind of do it top to bottom. So like like the game implementation, the UI, whatever audio implement implementation we need to do, any debug, like it's just kind of everything. So you kind of have to do a little bit of everything, um, which I think most of the programmers here do and that's that's generally how we function is, is that how you prefer to function like do, do you like the fact that you know that, that you kind of get to touch a lot of different parts of the the game yeah i think so like i think part of it's also it feels good to have ownership over like a feature like from top to bottom and like because all the different parts they they tie in together and the, like having control over all that and like having it all in your head makes it a lot easier as opposed to like here's my section of this bit and then you have to work on it now and understand what my bit did specifically like it's having that full slice makes it easier for all your stuff to work together and it's just it's nice to feel more invested in that one feature and so now like if if, if there's a bug that comes in it says oh there's a problem with the map there's a problem with surveying oh then it's not no i don't know <laughs> <laughs> then I, then I just send it a rant uh, <laughs> i'll ignore it <laughs> yeah. no yeah yeah, and basically they, they know to go like, to you, and if even if you don't yeah. know the answer, you know where the answer is because you really you know have a big investment in that feature. Yeah, yeah. And so generally, then it's like anything to do with whatever it's the map or whatever thing. Then it's like yeah, then that comes to me, um, and I complain and cry um, <laughs> and fix it anyways. Um. <laughs> so what what parts of the game do like are, are were you the most invested in as far as like this is this you know this is something that I that I made that I helped make and. Um, Sorry, I was reading the questions. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, feel, free to, feel free to ignore my questions and answer, like, viewer I, questions are more important than me. I remember this. Um, awesome but, uh, Twitch, dude. Your, the answer to your question, the, the last question you put, is rule number one. That's all I'll say. Yeah, cardio. cardio. Um, <laughs> what was the question again? Oh, what do I feel most invested in in terms of the features? Yeah, like, like if these guys want to know, like, what did this guy make, you know? I mean, I worked uh, a lot, like, implementation of the map, um, was something like when I first started, that was kind of one of my first projects. Well, um, and then, you know, the, the scouting system with like the passive scouting, so like as you get close to things, adding things to the map, um, the surveying um, from towers. Um, I think I, I took over camera near the end of the project. Um, God, I'm trying to remember what else. Uh, a lot of <laughs> UI stuff. There's a lot of UI bits and pieces that I had to jump into. Um, so a lot of UI, I get definitely pigeonholed in that. So, I mean, <laughs> which as yeah. much as I love it because it's immediate gratification, I'm definitely trying to branch out of that now. Um, 
Yeah, immediate grat gratification is, is a big part of how I decide what I want to work on, too. Yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> right. working on missions is tough because, you know, the mission, it takes a while before it's actually playable and fun, but ch you know, just changing a couple of character traits, that's really easy. And so, you know. Yeah. Um, so you had, you had a question you wanted to answer. Oh, yeah. Someone was asking if I had a programming experience before I went to DigiPen. Um, and I, I did, but not before I decided to go to DigiPen. Uh, once I decided I wanted to go to DigiPen and do game programming, then I decided to start taking programming courses in high school. Because I'm like, well, now I know what I need to do. And so I started getting like a little heads up there. But it was only like two two classes, I think. I think I took a basic course and then a C++ course. Um, and then went on to school. Um, and no, I was not responsible for moving zombie pips on the minimap for Nightmare. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> I gave guidance, but I was not directly responsible. I was actually working on another feature at the time, and then so someone else had to do it and asked for, you know, just a little guidance for what they had to do. But I'm not the person to blame for how hellish your experience is going to be, <laughs> for, at least for that. Other parts of it, yeah. No, we'll parade Brian and Devin back and forth. Um, for people to stick pins and needles into. Okay. I mean, I, I'm not, I just do what I'm told, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, Incencio uh, wants to know how long we've been working on this update. I don't actually remember how far back it goes. It's been a while. Yeah, and I, because I, I didn't start on it right when it started. Um, like I said, I was, I was on another, uh, another feature at the time, and then I came on a few weeks into it, or maybe a month. I don't know. I. My concept of when it started is so blurry because I wasn't directly <laughs> working on it. Yeah. But uh, it was months. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely been a while. It's been since, you know, sometime last fall, I believe, was, was about when we got started with this. And yeah, there's, there's been some significant time investment in this, for sure. But we've, uh, we've had a few questions on here about other features that are being added at the same time. As, uh, as a Choose Your Own Apocalypse update. And so I just wanted to reiterate a few of the things we have said uh, that are coming. One is choosing your map. Uh, whenever you are starting a new game or moving maps or, or whatever, or the, even during the tutorial, um, there's a new interface now for choosing what map you want to be in. So you don't have to, you know, you get up your perfect community and you really hope that you're going to land in Meager Valley and then you land in Cascade Hills or Drucker. Now you can actually definitely choose which map you go yeah. to. Uh, we're also providing a means of um, selecting which characters are going to go into your pool of legacy characters for the future. Because right now, the version of the game you've got, when you when you complete the game and you save a bunch of legacy characters, if you go over a certain limit, we start deleting them. Because we have to, to keep your save game viable. But now we're going to provide you with an interface where you can decide which characters you delete, which characters you keep, um, and it'll be completely up to you. So that's coming in as well. Um, and we just wanted to make sure you guys know that. You know, it's not just the difficulty modes, though uh, you know, those are a lot of fun and uh, challenging. We're also adding, and, and there, there's a long list, actually, of additional yeah. patches. I mean, they're always kind of working on quality of life improvements. Like, it's always just kind of looking at what are things bugging people the most and just doing what we can. Um without breaking the game horribly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, and that's always a risk, right? Yeah, whenever yeah. whenever you're going to add something to the game, there's a risk that you're going to break something worse. Uh, like, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's a balancing <laughs> act because you're constantly like, like, oh, man, this these people want this really bad. And it's like, that would be good, but it's, it's a really risky thing. Um, and we might have a lot of cascading issues with it. And so it's, it's you know, deciding is it worth taking that risk. Um, but I, I there's a lot of things we... I think we're able to do Area's safely, clear, and so there's, you know, we have our sustainment stuff going on, and we're constantly looking at that stuff, and doing what things we can. Yeah. So that was part of what oh, I was doing zombies. when Hardy, when oh, uh, no. the Chooser and Apocalypse team started, was just working on those quality of life improvement stuff. You guys see this uh, horde? It is made up entirely of uh, armored, it's like the SWAT exercise club decided to <laughs> come out and oh boy yeah so that that is one feature uh that's coming in with uh with choose your own apocalypse is entire hordes of armored zombies hordes that contain uh freaks hordes made entirely of freaks if you're in uh the nightmare zone yes. so there's a lot of really scary stuff going on um 
Let's see here. Emil Eng uh, asked uh, if this is going to be a free update. And yes, this is a free update. So just to reiterate, uh, on the 26th, this free update is going to land, and you get it for free. And then it, it, and it adds the ability to jump up to a higher difficulty level, either Dread Zones, which are moderately higher and uh, balanced to be you know, enjoyable for experienced players. And then there's Nightmare Zones, which are just for, for masochists. <laughs> so we have several of those we know in our fan base. So, yeah, I would uh, probably play it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Adam survives. Um, definitely fall down, go boom. Um, yeah, they'll 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 jump in and and do that stuff. Um, and I know several of the super OG players are uh, are excited about about getting back into that Chartier and people who used to play Breakdown at level ninety nine. Yeah, exactly. And they were like, "Oh, Breakdown ninety nine is not good enough." <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I'll just send somebody over to like you know punch your feet while you're playing or something. I don't know. So Skate Chunga wanted to know um, how how if or how the bases or characters have been upgraded in order to match uh, the higher difficulty level. Uh, I don't think they have. I mean, I think there's. I mean, it's some of it's been the costs. Uh, at least in like Nightmare Mode, I think it's gotten a little bit. It's been it has been raised a little bit um, to kind of build a little scarcity thing. Um, I think maybe in nightmare mode because of like because things cost more and there's higher risk. I think maybe outposts might give you more benefits. I think I, I think like what they give you in terms of resources per day might be up to like to match the uh, the, the amount you're investing in it. So it's more of a uh, high risk, high reward kind of. I think scenario. we we might have actually upgraded some of the the um, at this around the same time some of the enclave benefits. We 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 upgraded a bunch of them just. To make enclaves generally more valuable across the across yeah, the board. I mean, yeah. Um, but I, I think that really the question is, did we give did we give the um, the survivors and the bases more new things they could do to become more powerful? And I don't think we did that. Like I think that the idea is this is no. for players who want themselves to have to be more powerful uh, in order to in order to conquer the game. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of it's just like everything just is riskier in general. Um, and so, yeah, just it, we try to make it so when you have those high risk scenarios, we're actually giving you benefits that match that. Um, but a lot of that's just number tweaks and stuff like that, like making the, the things you get go up and whatnot. Uh, real quick, Glass Babies had a question. Uh, I don't. So the, the armored guys who were aggroed on me did not chase the fireworks. I believe they'll be drawn to it if they hadn't already noticed a, oh, yeah. a meal on wheels. We hadn't wheels. mentioned that yet, had yeah. we? Yeah, so yeah, fireworks aren't as OP in a Dread Zone and Nightmare Zone, where you can just use that as a get out of jail free card. Like now it's basically like, if they're not already latched onto you, they'll notice it and go after it. But if they're already trying to kill you, they don't give a, a damn about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Maxi 55555 uh, wants to know, uh, what was your nastiest problem feature you had to work on? Like what, what's a big challenge? Yeah, I saw that. I mean, the map was a big one because First of all, I mean, it's a big feature, and then, like, you know, as we were making the game, just the design changed so much, because, like, UX ties into that so much, um, and so, like, as you're iterating, you're just discovering, like, oh, this is not how the way we work, like, so it's being split into multiple menus, and then combining a one, and then just, you're just changing it so much, um, and then it's like, oh, God, I have to throw out all that other work I did, and so it was just that, it was just constantly changing, which was kind of nice to like see it progressing, um, but like it's never like I'm done. It's like no, this is something <laughs> we have to work on throughout the game because it's so crucial. Um, so it was just it was just a constant thing. Um, Ricky Sterling, you saw just how effective I was taking on that horde. So um, I I'll leave that to better players than I to. Did, did to, you run? I I I hit, got hit, ran. Got hit, ran, turned around, got hit, ran, and then ran. <laughs> I mean, the that's height the right of bravery. I the, think that <laughs> the height of I mean, bravery. I am. I am not someone to judge. What I, I am an absolute coward when I play this game. Um, I mean, that, <laughs> which is what I love about like the game makes me. It's the only game that actually makes me feel like a coward and makes me feel like that was the right choice. <laughs> Whereas most games are just like, ah, whatever, I just go in guns blazing and I'll always come out on top. Right, because there's um, no permadeath in those yeah, games. Yeah, it doesn't matter, I'll just reset. Um, and like, I've been playing Ob Oblivion again recently and I was playing last night and it's like, I was thinking about like, how much I was using the quick save and the quick load and I'm like, 
this is actually kind of ruining the experience. Like, none of these fights feel like anything to me. Um, <laughs> and so, and I'm never, I'm just, oh yeah, I'm so brave in that game, but in this game, I am a coward. I Same run. thing, yeah, I was playing, um... Uh, Division two last night with one with under uh, with undead mark actually and yeah I mean you get to a spot it's gonna be a big fight and you're like okay here we go mm -hmm. and you throw a grenade and, and start shooting and it doesn't matter if you don't make it because you checkpoint and you and you respawn this it's like there's no way I'm taking that horde oh, on yeah. because she's my doctor and I really <laughs> would like her to live right? oh god I love it and it like because it makes me feel like my instincts matter too. Like going into a situation, I'm like, I got a bad feeling about this. We got cerebral amesis. Hello, <laughs> brain Hello. vomit. Yeah. So uh, Zach Peterson wanted to know: Are we going to get other bl plague variants of freaks? I know they're getting the blood plague juggernaut. They're wondering if we can get any uh, additional plague freaks into the game. Quiet, you. Right <laughs> now, uh, we have not announced any additional plague freaks, so uh, you'll have to just keep that question in mind for the future. And uh, similarly, we got a question about whether uh, you're going to be able to demote your leaders. Um, not in this update is, is all I'll say about that. So we're getting a lot of, we definitely know what people have been asking for. And we've, we've paid a lot of attention to that. Not everything you hope for is coming out in this exact update, but we're working on a lot of things. So uh, please stick with us. Stay tuned and, and, and keep watching our streams. We'll keep you updated on, on what we can talk about. <laughs> Maxi Maxi says Jeffrey is such a tease. <laughs> well, I don't like opening doors. I do like jumping through windows. Uh, we've got. So uh, you're cautious. We we had we had a question about whether there's going to be any new um, legacy boons added to the game. Oh. Uh, so each legacy boon is tied to a specific, very elaborate mission arc, and we have not created any new mission arcs to justify adding oh. new legacy boons. So we still have the same four legacy boons we've always oh my had, God. but you do have to earn them again if we want to use them in uh, yeah. in dread mode, oh dread no. zone, <laughs> nightmare <laughs> zone. <laughs> this is none of this is good. There is nothing good got, happening right now. Got all of the zombies after you. There's, there's. Drop them some pizza. Drop the pizza. There's a bunch of hordes. <laughs> we yes, really should have made them get attracted to pizza. There's I don't a know ton why of didn't hordes. And then there's a blood juggernaut on my way home, like the the escape route. Uh, KNT wants to know if Choose Your Own Apocalypse does anything to stop them from using modded guns that they've been using uh, <laughs> so far in the game. I don't think we address that at all. I think if anything that you were doing in the in the base game, like, if, I don't think it changes anything. Yeah, I don't think that would be addressed. We do not officially that, support that, yeah. but... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And if that was the thing, I feel like that would be more of a sustainment thing outside of any yeah. specific feature. So b because our game is not, like, a big server-hosted game, especially because we don't have PvP, yeah, um, a lot of that stuff, we're actually pretty hands-off when it comes to people wanting to mod the game. Like, if you and your friends want to make the game different and weird and play it your own way, you know, we're, we're not standing in the way. We're not officially supporting it, but we're also not standing in the way of it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, kind of go nuts. Do it. Do what you want. See how you feel about it. Uh, now and then we now and then we see a mod that we really don't like. Uh, but uh, somebody posted one on Facebook the other day that was just uh, uh, horrifying. But uh, oh. that that's the, one of the dangers of allowing people to mod the game is sometimes they can use your 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 game as a tool to make for evil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But. Uh, <laughs> So that's why, and if we ever were like a big, you know, uh, if we did decide to make a big, you know, server hosted game, we would have to take on more of that responsibility for controlling um, what what players can do, you know, with the game. But right now, since we backed off from that and we didn't go whole hog with that kind of big, massive investment, we also, you know, it gives people more room to sort of mess around with the game as they like. Yeah, which I like. I think it's really cool to see. Also, it gives, you know, let them be creative and do what they want and also see, hey, this actually, it's the most honest way for them to say what they want to see in State of Decay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Which, I mean, granted, that might just be Thomas the Tank Engine in State of Decay. <laughs> if that really is any indication. <laughs> uh, Leon Anagers wants to know uh, if he takes one community in and earns, you know, or, or like I guess a series of four communities in and earns all of the boons at the higher difficulty level, can he then take an existing community that existed that whole time, bring them into the new difficulty level, and then have all the boons available? If they completed the boons on a higher difficulty level and then use a different community. Yeah. So, I mean, once you unlock the boons on the harder difficulty level, it's like any other boons, they're available to all the other communities. It just, um, you just have to have had unlocked it in that difficulty level. Yeah. So, we don't like record, you know, like when you started a community, what boons were available at the start 
and then you know and try to just freeze it there like we actually just we do the check you know at the time that you graduate the community to new to a new yeah. difficulty level yeah so if you've got them unlocked at that time then you got them unlocked yep uh, Harvey Spiderweb wants to know, can you add a new character like uh, Gurubani Kar, who is a favorite character from the original uh, State of Decay? <laughs> so, uh, we, not for this update. This update does not include any new characters. That does not mean there will not be any new characters uh, added to the game in the future. So, in, uh, that's all I can yeah, say. It does not preclude it. It doesn't preclude it, and we're not announcing anything. So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're a bastard. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> this is my favorite part of my job is figuring out how not to say things. Oh, um, Skate Chongo says that uh, last week oh, it was mentioned that rewards for defeating Plague Hearts were improved in the new difficulty mode. Uh, can we speak as to how? I mean, I'm not sure we landed at the end, but I think it's more Plague Samples and so I don't really know. Uh, it, there, no, there are definitely, there are definitely like human inventories that can be found inside the play in play cards. Okay, that one's I, that one's I, definitely real. Um, last time I played, I was too scared to do a play. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're like I'm gonna play in nightmare mode because you want your pants scared off you. Yeah, <laughs> Is that basically? I want everything to feel like a huge accomplishment. Um, but I am still a coward at heart. <laughs> um, so it takes me a long time to work up to that. Um. And I feel like the like when the last time I did take on a plague heart in the Heart of Difficulty Modes, uh, I was so focused on getting the hell out of there once I killed it that I didn't pay attention to what I got. <laughs> I just wanted because things were going very badly. Uh. <laughs> but it is more than just plague samples. There, there you can get um, you know items, and uh, depending on what difficulty level you're playing at, the items you can get from t destroying a plague heart can get will get better and better, rarer and rarer. Um, so that one, I, Brian answered that one in the chat for us last time, and so that I happen to know the answer to that question. <laughs> Brian is usually the, per the last person who touches a lot of these things, so he's the one who usually knows the final detailed response yeah. to a lot of these questions. Because uh, that's kind of the way it works. Like, like, usually the way we do things around here, like a programmer will make a tool that then allows designers to do a lot of the bulk content work, rather yeah. than a programmer having to touch every single thing. Yeah, and then really the only truth that I know is like my anecdotal evidence of like the one time I killed a plague heart or something like that. <laughs> so I don't know like what's actually in the pool and you know everything. So he's a, a definitely a, a broader vision of what all is possible. Um, so Max Jack the Lad uh, wants to know what happened to Lily after State of Decay. I think we've got it. That, that's already a, uh, uh, an established thing in, in State of Decay 2. She, she comes in over the radio. Yeah, there's she's got some voice in there. Yeah, so yeah. If, you, if, you play, if you play State of Decay 2 long enough, you will hear her voice coming over the radio talking about you know, what she's doing now. She's, she's actually the boss of the network faction. So, you know, uh, but you got to be listening to the, to the radio uh, messages to, to, to pick that Andy up. Andy Pym, stop lying. I cannot see what Andy's saying. I'm looking at my uh, so other Lily stuff dies. here. Oh, pff, yeah. <laughs> Don't lie. I mean, everyone dies eventually, so I'm sure it's somewhere in our lore, whether it's in the it's future or what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Scarproof asks if Plague Hearts respawn at higher difficulty levels. Uh... I don't think, you know, we couldn't because uh, even if we'd wanted to, uh, a lot of the missions are dependent on Plague Hearts eventually getting wiped out so you can progress yeah, to the next that's phase. that's part of the whole cycle of everything is that you need to kill the Plague Hearts. So are there more, like, though? I think Brian said last oh, week that there were more. Yeah. I think so. I think that they're actually, yeah. The the, the numbers are different in each of the difficulty yeah, levels. Brian, and definitely in Nightmare, there's a lot. There's more. Brian of them. said last week. This, so we're not revealing anything we haven't already said. So yeah, um, there are. Yeah, we made it harder. Yeah. And Come on, I mean, Scarproof. They're harder, too. Scarproof yeah. is, uh, is one of those elite players yeah, that nothing. is ready for Nightmare, so I can understand his question. So Red Cell wants to know, do you guys have any tips for, you know, playing differently when you're in a Nightmare? <laughs> Don't nightmare die. Um, I mean, I'm super, super cautious. I stealth, stealth everywhere. Uh, I just always, when you see... And you've aggroed more than three zombies. Run the hell away. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a hero. That's my advice. <laughs> yeah, you get used to the sense that you can kind of be a superhero in the, in the base difficulty level, right? Like, you can, like, oh, there's seven zombies, and they're all crowded around me, and there's a freak, but I'll probably make it out alive if I just do the right things. This time, you actually have to pick and choose your battles. Yeah. Like, yeah. like what I did. Running away is not shameful. 
Oh, no. I didn't <laughs> run away soon enough. <laughs> um, yeah, and prepare. Oh. Uh, yeah, I think that's also the biggest thing for me, is I carry... I, I found that I carried a lot more on me because I wanted to be prepared for more different situations more of the time. Like, I didn't really use... It's funny, even with the changes with fireworks and firecrackers, uh, I use them so much more now than I did in the base game. More and to, I, like, avoid zombies? Like, you throw it to distract them before they've noticed you, that, and then you can sneak or past? I get in a lot of bad situations now that I didn't used to get in, and I'm like, how the hell do I get out of this? Like, <laughs> a lot of things, I'll be chased up a roof, <laughs> and I'm like, I got a horde with a feral and a juggernaut. I'm like, well, damn! And they're at the <laughs> bottom of the ladder. Um, and so, like, getting out of view and then, like, tossing fireworks away from me it's been a lifesaver so many times. Um, and so, like, yeah, just, like, being prepared and having more things on me that I probably normally wouldn't have thought I needed um, has been a big thing for me. That's helped a lot. Um, so I always, you know, I always have my snacks and my bandages and, you know, crossbow bolts and well, and, and, and Honestly, that was one of those things that, that the original State of Decay had was, like, that that need to make a decision uh, about how much you pack versus how much space you leave to find things, right? And that's... Oh yeah, and the great thing, and like, and then certain characters with certain specializations just stand out that much more, like people with resourcefulness, and it's like, okay, having actually having four fireworks is a big deal as opposed to the three, like having that extra little bit on each one, so it's like, okay, I don't have to actually carry two stacks now, I think four is good enough for me. Um, like. Like, all those skills that normally I'm like, yeah, it's all right. Like, now I'm like, no, that guy. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going for that. Um, because it all makes so much more of a difference now. So I think, yeah, it's being prepared has, has been a big, big change for me, I think. Got to think about it. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Who's coming? Oh, hello. Oh, no. See, this is that break-even number where, like, should I just run? Well, it depends on how many more you can. I'm just gonna keep drawing my shoe. Uh, what am I doing to draw them other than killing their I mean, brethren? Ouch! Uh, let's drink that soda. Thank goodness it's right. still in production. You got this. Phew! All right. No more zombies on the horizon. Good. Now I'm gonna break into a store that probably has 10,000 zombies in it. And by 10,000, I mean three really scary zombies. We'll see. I don't know. I've gotten some... I think that's one of the things, too. Is I There's think one. I've gotten Ambush There's two. Uh, now, I mean, I think... Yeah, yeah. I, I think now Now I... Yeah, going inside, I used nope. to just run inside as refuge. Now it's definitely... I have to, like, look in beforehand and be like, oh, wait, <laughs> is this a good idea? Am I going to be able to get out if I run in here? Like... Entryways, like now knowing my exits has been a big deal for me because there's so many more ambushes now. Yeah, what, <laughs> what window can I charge? Like this room is terrifying to me. Oh right yeah, now. no, yeah, I would clear the building before I would go in there. See, I live what dangerously. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, Scarproof is wondering if there's any particular uh, types of character traits and things that you rely on when you are in uh, when you're in the harder difficulty levels. Um, I, I mean, I definitely rely on certain specializations. Um, like, yeah, like what? Resourcefulness, like I said. Um, I feel like, I mean, the stealth, I think, because I stealth so much, being able to move faster mm -hmm. and stay quieter is a, is a big deal for me. I imagine um, that scouting probably has more value than it did before since we've removed oh, the pips hello. from the map, showing where the zombies are. Scouting oh, yeah. brings those back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. When I get the chance to do it, it's definitely, uh, yeah, a huge, huge boon. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> it's fun. I, I just, now I just feel like every one of them now matters a lot more to me. Um, cause before I'd just be like, you know, yeah, I, I can handle this anything. So whatever. Um, but now any benefit I can get, I'm so glad, glad for. <laughs> now the question is, uh, Andy B 74 wants to know, um, Will some of the character buffs like infection resistance just not matter anymore? Uh, I, I think they'll matter a lot more. Maybe like, more. yeah, like because infection resistance plague, especially. Yeah, you get more plague damage generally. Um, so mm. that would be a, yeah, it's a much bigger thing. Um, 
Yeah. yeah normally, if, you, if it, t- it would normally take you like twenty hits to get the plague, but now on the higher difficulty level, it takes you three hits to get the plague. Bumping up your your infection resistance would make a big would make a big difference there. Yeah, that's a big deal. That's a huge. Yeah, the plague now is. Uh, I yeah, it's a big pain in the butt. So, like, it actually matters. It's great. Yeah, especially in, in um, Nightmare when it'll kill you in 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> and that's if you don't get hit any extra times. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. If you keep getting hit with Plague, then it'll just tear it right down. Yeah, oh, yeah. it seems to attract, one thing seems to attract the other, right? It's well, like, yeah, because then you get you panic and you get reckless right. and you just run into another Plague horde. Yep, it always spirals downwards. All right, so I've got medical, but I don't have enough influence to get anything else. Let's keep searching. Let's go to like a really dangerous high density place because I'm so brave. Do you have goals or are you just I'm just driving around because uh, you just causing it, chaos. I've been no, I've been trying to recruit people, but nobody's recruitable, except maybe this local disturbance, which will probably kill me. Do you use the uh, the radio commands to try to get people? You over? know, smarty pants. Oh, oh, yeah. See, oh. that's not a see, local disturbance. <laughs> that's the most terrifying thing ever. I mean, that sounds disturbing. Oh boy, I'm gonna go park my car over here so he can't break it. So, uh, Psycho Moment uh, wants to know uh, if we've made any changes to the way that, that the headlights on our cars work. Uh, specifically, there's a request uh, to allow us to leave the headlights on when we get out of a car so that it's like shining somewhere and we can use it. Oh. That is not a feature that we've added. We have changed a little bit about the way that headlights work, though. Um, or, or, like, what we've changed is the way your flashlight oh, works. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. He just... Come on. You weren't <laughs> invited. came out of nowhere. That was awesome. You weren't invited. I'm going to go inside. So now the game actually remembers um, whether you had your lapel light on or not when you get in and out of a car. So if you have it on on purpose, you get in the car and get out again. Get out again, it'll st- it'll stay on. Thank uh, <laughs> So so we did make some improvements there. Well, not the specific one you're asking for, but we did make some improvements yeah, there. So I think that would be a hard one technically because then you could like have like a bunch of cars all with their lights on in one spot. Yeah, that, that's probably the main problem. Is that, like each light you add to the scene. It, it, it's got a, produ- uh, a performance cost, right? And so if, if players had the ability to just turn on an infinite number of lights, uh, they could destroy their own performance, and, and, and that would be ultimately a bad experience. Yeah. Don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me. Oh, jeez, come on, guys. Okay, so Late Crononaut wants to know, um, did the build times for facilities get increased? Um, and Brian actually just answered us in Slack and said no. Uh, so the, the build times were much more about the pacing of the game than they were about the difficulty of the game. So we didn't increase yeah. them to increase the difficulty, but some of the costs did go up, especially materials. You're going to need to go out and get more materials uh, if you want to build stuff at your base. Buddy, you're yeah. a lifesaver. <laughs> uh, Michael Peza wants to know, will we earn less influence um, in the harder difficulty levels? Uh, yes, I, think, I am looking for new. Don't leave I me. Think sometimes it might Don't actually be the opposite. Um, yeah, that's the impression I got too. Because I mean, yeah, that's one of the things is that in hard mode um, and or in, in drone zone and nightmare zone, Please. because the resource costs are higher and because it's harder to get things, you're actually naturally you're just you know more scarce in resources, and so giving you more options on how to do things uh, was an important thing for us, um, and so like like being able to get more influence through trading, um, having more tradable things that are worth a lot of influence, um, and getting more rewards for killing people like through freaks and stuff like mm-hmm. that um, through influence. So it's actually a little bit m- more rewards in some areas because- yeah, just for doing incidental things out in the world, things like defeating a feral, you'll get a big influence prize yeah, for that that any, you might not have otherwise yeah, gotten. Yeah, because a lot of it's, anything that's like a big risk generally gets you more, more influence now um, and yeah, and I think there's more influence, like, more items that are what? worth a lot of influence around. Oh, um, come on. That's because now influence is so much more vital. That was so um, yeah, because it gives because influence gives you flexibility to fill in the gaps in your in your in your strategy. You know, like buying things oh, yeah. you can't afford. That there's, kind of stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of features that used influence that I didn't really engage with in in the base game. That now because of just like 
the build like the buildings are so like scarce like like I need food and I scavenged a few food bu food buildings that are anywhere near me um, that yep. now I'm like I, oh, I I need I need some other way to go so now I've been engaging with like the trading a lot more and yeah. uh, radio commands to find food and so like I just use my influence so much more um, that like I you know that's why a lot okay. of the influence numbers going up is kind of I don't want this mode. guy to destroy yeah. my um, car yeah. I'm in real trouble here. So uh, Jay Z wants to know. Um, I assume it's not that Jay Z. Uh, don't know. <laughs> did we ever consider making freaks? Uh, oh my god. Okay. That, that were only around at the nighttime. So yes, actually, there was like when we were brainstorming very early ideas, there was a design written down for a freak that would only show up at night and be really creepy. And we didn't en didn't end up doing it because it was like Get in the car. it would have been like the twelfth freak we made, and uh, we only made you know four or five. So yeah, I, I <laughs> yeah that sounds really cool. Going home. Yeah, I actually found a survivor. So Nerd McGee is like, hey, I still haven't heard back about if y'all are adding juggernauts that spawn baby ferals when they die out of their tummies. <laughs> and uh, no, that is not in the game. <laughs> no, and seriously, seek help. <laughs> I mean, there there have been crazier ideas floated, but... Uh, <laughs> Talk about punishment mode, though. Yeah, I know. Like, you finally did the juggernaut down and yeah, suddenly the, the feral bursts out of its gut. <laughs> it's like, nope, we're going to rain on your parade. Immediately. Uh, Cer Cerebral Mises, no, the uh, the difficulty modes do not uh, add any new population restrictions to your community. So it's the same population restriction we've always had, which is, you know, 10 to 12 people in your community. And that's how many people are um, uh, the community screen supports. Uh, and so that's why, <laughs> that's why that's what we do. Um, if we ever were to increase that limit, it would require us to fundamentally kind of rebuild that screen so that that's one of the you know th there's a few different reasons why it's difficult to to just go in and, and make a change there though we know people have been asking for it um it's it's got some costs to it so it's something that we've definitely heard and you know we paid attention to it but for right now uh it's not it's it's not something that we uh have really done anything with so it's the same that that is unchanged all right. Every time I go out, I come back with injuries. So that's an example of <laughs> oh, that's true. How it's a little bit harder. I'm surprised you're not dead. You should be dead. No, I mean, <laughs> let's let's be let's let's be completely honest here. I expertly handled that situation. You handled it. <laughs> okay, we can dis we, we can disagree on the level of expertise. <laughs> We can certainly do that. So, but injuries are a lot more common. Normal combat will, will result in injuries like yes. that, that take effort to, to overcome more often than, than they did before. Just getting scratched by a feral could end up with lacerations or something like that. Yes, it, the game hurts more. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Kai NT wants to know, uh, are there limits on the numbers of vehicles on the map in the harder difficulty? Uh, levels. I mean, yeah, it's more restrictive, I believe. I, I think they're scarcer. I mean, because Brian, Brian said yes. Yes. The, um, there are fewer vehicles. So. I mean, that's. I think that's something probably the base game could benefit from, anyways, because vehicles are kind of generally OP. So we have definitely got it's less vehicles. Um, I think they might be in more rundown states, or you have to. That was the other them, thing, yeah. Um, and whatnot. So it's 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 an investment to get a vehicle and to get it up to up to shape to actually be able to use it. Um, and so you're going to care about them a lot more. And, yeah, and they're not just your win-all button anymore. So some, somebody just asked about the probabilities of getting rucksacks. It's lower because there's fewer supplies on the map. But I don't... I'm not sure the actual, like, drop rate has changed. I think just there's less... Yeah, like, there's just like less. ...places with them because there's, like, the pre-looted buildings and, um, yeah. Yep. Don't think we specifically so. tweak the numbers. But I don't know. Brian yeah. would know. Uh, Thomas Gold, I have not uh, found an answer for you yet on on why uh, your characters might not be receiving those uh, those conversations that add traits to them. Um, I've you know I've had a lot on my plate for the past week, uh, and so I haven't actually done it yet. But uh, I do plan to look into it. I think I'll, I'll I'll go after this. I'll I'll go and I'll log a bug on it so that somebody will definitely uh, sort of try to verify when and where and, and where that's happening so that we can we can try to get a solution for you. I'll see what Kimberly I'll send myself a little note here. right now. Yay, yeah, she brought an unbroken melee weapon, which is actually really important. <laughs> Supplies are home, safe and sound. Hmm. 
Oh, and an eight-pocket backpack, which is also very nice to have. So she's my next guinea pig. So uh, Spike ten sixteen four says uh, there was a feature in State of Decay that allowed the game to kind of just continue in the background. I think he's referring to the fact that you know when time passed between sessions, we would yeah. simulate the time yeah. that had passed. I said, yeah. He's like, why why didn't that make it into the sequel? Uh, <laughs> a lot of people did not like that. <laughs> yeah, way way more from people. From what I gather, yeah, from what I remember hearing. I mean, not only didn't it was, like it. Hated it <laughs> because I mean you'd show up and occasionally like uh, Marcus would be dead. <laughs> you'd be like, okay, well I'm done with and that I, playthrough. I mean even in the in the first game it was something that like over time kind of got tweaked because it started out where they had stuff like that where you had like main people in your community die, and then it, I think it, more of the negative effects got pulled out more and more until it was mostly like positive things, some slightly bad things, but they get rid of the really bad things like your community members dying. Because I think for me, like when I was playing the Year One Survival Edition, it was only like neighbors that could die while yeah. you're offline. So like even then they were still pulling it back because a lot of people did not like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I, I liked it in terms of just the fiction and the lore um, and providing that world. But like a lot of times it's like, I gotta go to work. <laughs> Don't punish me. So right, there's a lot of folks in the chat who are saying that they actually loved that feature. But it's like it's it's hard to know when when you can either have the feature or not. It's hard to figure out, you know, like how do you yeah. balance it just right so that people get the most enjoyment out of because either like, yeah, experience. But at the same time people have lives and they can't play the game all the time. And you gotta be able to go away and do that. Yeah, if you if you were uh, working for a week somewhere and came back and had everything gone. I'm going to take this guy out of melee. Oh, except he's stuck on a rock. <laughs> this is the only chance you have. Yep, probably. Run away. <laughs> oh, no! That was that, not the right that is, that, is, <laughs> that is the exact wrong what way to start that there? battle. What was your plan there? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh. Uh, Psycho Moment asks, um, when you get, if you flip a car, since cars, <laughs> since cars are so rare, it went so bad. Since cars are so rare in the higher difficulty levels, if you flip them over, can you get them back? I mean, you can flip them anyways. Flip them back, yeah. Um, anyways, and then I think. Maybe yeah. Maybe oh, jeez. Your car. My new character. Like that. There's a radio man, I believe. Yeah, in the original game, we knew like. People would be playing at very high difficulty levels, and they would lose their one car, and they would just—it would just be the end of the game for them, right? And so we uh, we did add features that you can flip a car, reflip a car that's that's been flipped. Uh, you can repair cars that have been practically destroyed out in the field, and if you get a car stuck somewhere, uh, you can use a radio command to unstick the car. So you've got a lot. I mean, it is still possible to get a car into a state where you can't get into it, and you can't oh, get boy. to it, and it's lost. But it's much much harder to get into that state than it was in the original yeah. game. So, I, I spent the last two streams trying to get a new survivor. I got, finally got a new survivor, and the first time she steps out of the door, she now has plague. <laughs> she's got blood plague. Don't act do like this is her Do fault. we have samples? <laughs> no, it's, it's because she's totally lame. Do, do we have samples, though? Can we heal her? Let's find out. How long does it take to make... I think you can... Well... I mean, see, this is when you'd have to do like a Hail Mary Plague Heart run, right? Oh, boy. Oh. Well, I mean, she's, you know, okay. she's got a death sentence anyway, so I'm gonna you should check, take her to a Plague I'm going to check her. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and then you have a chance of beating it and then getting a bunch of Plague samples and you make a cure. This is... Look at what I've got to choose from. <laughs> Look at all... <laughs> I mean, don't you have uh, like a first aid kit? You can heal her up. So and take her in because she's doomed anyway. No, stop it. She's Come not on. doomed. I have hope. <laughs> but you don't I'm gonna have plate samples. I'm going to check her in. She's being checked in. I thought I don't you were brave. I, I thought you were the brave one. I don't want to have like a, <laughs> a minor cut when I'm around you and be like, oh, too bad. No band-aids around, so I'm going to throw you into a wood she's chipper. She's got a plate. <laughs> she's, she's got a timer on her life. There's a literal timer on her life. <laughs> <laughs> You're not invited. 
Uh, Skate Chongo asks if any of the new achievement details can be disclosed. Uh, we haven't really talked about it, but we haven't we haven't shared it yet. They'll definitely be disclosed when the game is you know when the update is released in a week. So uh, we'll definitely we'll go through them and talk about them then. But you'd be the one that would know. Uh, actually, this this is the first set of achievements that I didn't have a whole lot to do with. I mean, I I implemented them, but I was just I was just the guy with the mouse and the keyboard. Like other people designed them before they got to me. Oh, okay. So it's not really deep in my head. Uh, you, if you want to see the achievement art, though, just look back at the past thumbnails for the past, like, uh, I don't know, six or so videos. Uh, I've been using the achievement, arts fr uh, the achievement art from, uh, oh, from Choose Your Own Apocalypse as the thumbnails for our YouTube videos. Oh, look at that. I need samples, and look what happened. You ask oh, a whole you shall bunch of plague guys. Now, did I get any samples? Uh, I guess you should have brought your pathologist. Do you have a pathologist? All of that effort. <laughs> Is that the, uh, the skill that gives you a it's better It's a skill that gives you, yeah, better chance. Or, 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 if you want to get more plague samples, do you have use a crossbow. crossbow. Yeah, do you have a crossbow? Anyone? Nope. Use a crossbow and bring a pathologist. They know what they're doing. Or just... You could go to a plague and just I'm go gonna, around. I'm not I'm saying just, you have to go I'm to gonna, I'm going to drive around the plague heart. Just go around yeah. it and pick them off. I am going to drive around the plague heart. Hey, there's some, there's some red... No. Uh, no. Vassinum 777. I wish I could answer some of your questions about uh, Trimble Valley, but uh, unfortunately, we, we just we don't have any announcements we can make. Other about than that. I hear it's beautiful this time of year. <laughs> yeah, uh, because we're 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 still we're still working on that uh, future uh, expansion to the game, and so there's a lot of there's a lot of questions that if we answer them now it would be kind of irresponsible. The the answer might change. So uh, we're, we're keeping it close to the vest for now, but uh, I'm looking forward to when we can actually share that stuff with also, you. Also, we'd lose our job. <laughs> so there's that. Well, you know, this is this is a friendly place. Uh, they're, they're not gonna fire plague us. Samples? How many plague samples do I need? Oh, and uh, then there's a fair. Five. <laughs> uh, we've had a couple questions about whether you get to keep all of your stuff when you switch difficulty levels. With the same community, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's basically the same as moving maps. Um, so like your 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 supply locker stuff, everything like your inventory. Oh, I'm being chased by two ferals, oh. except I got one. Like you, your facilities, you'll have to rebuild just like when you move maps. But I think you'll have that boost again um, that you normally do that lets you build a little faster for a little bit. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's basically just like moving maps. So everything that basically all rules that apply there essentially. People notice you killed a, a conehead zombie, by the way. I did. I got lucky, but I'm. I'm currently being chased by the second of two ferals, and he's slippery. He is. And there's, you know, all these plague guys around. Oh, look at that horde. What is that? Are they yeah, plague? I'm working on it, dude. Oh, come on. I, I mean, I have, there's a zombie chasing me that can literally tear me out of the, ca like. Oh, boy. Yeah. And you're sitting there not, in, you're, you're not She's encouraging dying. me to make good choices. I'm just thinking about her. Yes! Hey. Finally got that guy. <laughs> wow. And I it only... If there's any... Hey, I'm to buy some things. All right. I'm no. getting out. Making good choices. Making good choices. Fine now. Uh, 201 The Artist wants to know, uh, why can't the members of other enclaves be more than three people? Uh, I think par part of the issue is that there's a limit to how many AI characters we can have existing on our map at once because our game has to keep track of all of them. And uh, and so if we... Right now, there's, our, there's a limit on the number of different enclaves you can have, and each of those enclaves is limited to how many people it can have. And that's just to keep the overall number of people down to the point where uh, the game can, can handle it. If we let it get too high, yeah, performance will be tanked. That you can have a follower, and you can have a mission follower with you, so that adds to the number of AI that's going to be in the area as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, so there's just limits to how many you can do. So if you bring a follower and a mission follower to a place where a friendly enclave and a hostile enclave are both fighting, if those enclaves had six members each, it would just get so ridiculous. And a lot of them, like, live in, like, kind of smaller houses and whatnot, so, like, having 20 <laughs> people in, like, this tiny little house just isn't going to Bumping work into out, each other. Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kelly Campbell says, State of Decay is one of my favorite games for backseat gaming. You mean, like, for watching somebody else uh, get destroyed and you don't oh, have the yeah. same investment in their characters so you can laugh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I love, <laughs> like, pushing them into doing really stupid things that I know are just bad ideas. <laughs> but giving them enough encouragement to let them believe that they what, can do like it. What, <laughs> like, telling me I should just charge right in there? Is that what you're admitting? I still think it was the Oh, right come move. on. <laughs> but 
But imagine how many plague samples he might have on him. Might is might. the operative <laughs> word here. I imagine not getting paid off for it's that two. risk. <laughs> oh, gee. It just didn't... It didn't matter, did it? Uh, we've had a question about whether or not uh, we're making any changes to follower AI. Uh, we haven't made any big changes to their AI, AI but we have fixed one bug where um, they were not being prioritized uh, as, as an important member of your community when you came home. So uh, basically, we, we can't actually have all 10 of the members of your community out at once because um, it, it's just it's too much AI. Uh, and so we, we, we cull it down so you can only see a handful of them at a time. The problem was we were not prioritizing your follower to be on the list of people you definitely have to keep around. So sometimes if you came home, your follower would wink out of yeah. existence uh, because they, they weren't on the list. And so we fixed that. The follower is always at the top of the list, so they don't wink out anymore. So that should help some problems people have been seeing. Uh, it, it, there wasn't a major AI revamp or anything. Yeah, there's no tweets around really two weeks to the It's more just more like fixes surrounding the, uh, the followers and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. There's... Yeah, I mean, I've got, I've got. There's no good options here. You could, you could kite him pretty far away and then come back. Seriously, I totally dodged that like a pro. I think it's like a, I think that's a good attack now. It's a blood blink I think they, I think that's actually an AOE attack. Get away from my car! I need that. All right, here I go. Making the run for it. Get the hell out. I still didn't oh get... Oh, jeez. Oh, Come on. <laughs> Come on. There's those trees. Oh, man. I still need one plague... I still need a sample. Kite, kite the jug away. Oh, oh, there's some guys. None of this is going to end well. I just don't see it ending well. Uh, Kermit memes. Uh, so when we were answer answering the question about whether you get to keep all of your stuff... Uh, when you switch difficulty levels, that also includes your influence. So you have to keep your influence when you're switching difficulty levels. And you were also asking about prestige. Prestige is actually tracked on your account level. So there's nothing you can do in a community, aside from spending it, that would reduce the amount of prestige that you have. Yeah. Yeah. All that stuff to stay there. Um, your resources and all that stuff. Um, and because, like, you're moving um, will, you know, refund your facilities, so you'll actually get run, 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 materials run, run. back. And oh, yeah, that's true. You'll have more run, stuff run, in your run, coffers. Run, run. Yeah. Just not as many facilities. You'll get some of the investment from the facilities back, just like when changing. Oh, boy. Try, 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 try. And that's on top of just what you already had. Out. I'm out. Did you get what you needed? I got, I believe I got five plague samples, and I am... You should, you should look and make sure. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Okay. Uh, people are pointing out that your car is on fire, Brent. Thank you. It's not <laughs> quite on fire yet. It's and my glasses smoking. are slipping down my nose. I don't dare, like, <laughs> try to move them. <laughs> Everything's going wrong here. Uh, if I hit okay, something now else... You're, now you're on fire. I can't now. afford... I don't want to have to... I need this truck to live. So we've had people ask this question uh, multiple times, so we'll just answer it again real quick. Um, if once you have unlocked a boon at nightmare level, any other community that you change difficulty levels with will be able to to maintain that boon. Or or you know, or if you make a new community, you'll be able to use that boon. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of folks who are very anxious about graduating a community with boons and losing the boons because they hadn't earned them yet. But you definitely you will keep the boons as long as you have earned them somewhere with another community. Yeah, but I mean, like, if you only if you only earn them in just the base game normal mode, um, and then you bump up to nightmare, you're gonna have to re-earn them again yeah. before you can use them in nightmare. But like, if you've got a favorite community that's in stand in a standard zone right now, and they've got boons that they're using, and you grab some, you start a brand new community in nightmare, and you earn all the boons in nightmare. Then if you graduate that first community, they then, will totally have access to the boons. Yep. Yep. So. That is, uh, we actually, I, I asked a test last week, I asked one of our testers that, and he went and he checked, and he confirmed that that is how it's working. <laughs> because that's the kind of thing it would be easy for us to forget to do. Like, if there was a bug with that and it wasn't working, it would have been very easy for us to not notice it. But he went and checked, it definitely works that way. Yeah. Ah, oh, you did it. I did it. You pulled it off. And, um... People are celebrating. Yeah, they're, boy, they're all celebrating, except they're going, yay, ow! Yay, ow! <laughs> Ow! 
everybody's everybody's in trouble here, except her. She doesn't have like a broken ankle. She's a volunteer coordinator. Seems like a cool person. You're running low on meds. You better get some meds. What have you been doing? <laughs> <laughs> Your people are dying. <laughs> so what do you th you think that when we uh, when we switch over to nightmare mode next time around, do you think that I should cheat us some extra characters? No. When you switch over to nightmare mode, I'm going to be uh, conveniently away from the office. So. <laughs> Guess who's gonna play? <laughs> Plus, you, you want to see a community life, right? You volunteered. For that. <laughs> you just volunteered for that smart, <laughs> smart guy. <laughs> and yes, I'm low on meds because I saved someone's life. Somebody who brought gardening to the table as well. Why was her life in need of saving? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Listen. I don't think she did it of her own accord. Working with you. Indicates that I don't have very good impulse control nor good decision making. Um, Aberdeenie, we don't have a specific time of day uh, scheduled for uh, for the for the uh, March 26th release of this update. But typically in the past, a lot of our updates they have come out around like 10 o'clock in the morning Pacific time. I know that's when I've been able to update the game so that I can put them on the stream that day. Uh, so that's what we've done in the past. Uh, I have no reason to think it would happen differently this time, but, you know, uh, we, de we don't have some kind of, like, promise or guarantee about that. Hopefully, I mean, I'm with you. Hopefully, uh, we're, we're oh going to get the drop in the morning because we want to stream the game live here that same day, and we want to be streaming the retail version. Uh, so, you know. Actually, wait, maybe we shouldn't because uh, we might want to be able to cheat to survive nightmare mode. Uh, so. Oh, come on, no. <laughs> You don't want, no, you don't want to survive. I want uh, to see you die. I guess that's true. Okay, well, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> so we've only got like four minutes left. So you guys have any last minute questions for us or last minute, que qu last minute questions specifically for Eric? Uh, let him fly. Or not, I don't know. <laughs> or whatever, you know. I need the, that, uh, that giant horde of nothing but armored dudes to chase me over here instead of go towards the base. Uh, awesome really Twitch dude fireworks. wants to know how many of us there are uh, working on State of Decay 2. And it's hard to count that, actually, because we've got multiple different projects working in parallel. Because we had the, the, choo the Choose Your Own Apocalypse team working in parallel with the team that uh, is working on whatever the Trumbull Valley thing is. Uh, plus, we have other people working on bug fixes and updates. Plus, we have people working on research for whatever we do in the future. It's hard to really say one moment to the next exactly how many yeah. people we have working on the game. Because it, it keeps shifting and there's different things going we on We have at once. 70 people at the office and not all of them are working all the time on State of K2 stuff, right? So There you go, yeah. Yeah. Hey, broken cow. Michael Peza wants to know, what programming language was the game made in? We've got a programmer right here. I mean, it's, it's C++ mostly. Uh, it's built with the Unreal Engine, which is C++. Um, but I mean, we, we've got you know tools and stuff that like use C sharp and some Python, I think. And but it's it's mostly all C plus plus. None of part. what you just said makes sense to me. <laughs> I think yeah, uh, yeah. a lot of our data is JSON, and <laughs> which is its yeah. own different thing. Not really a programming language. Yeah, data is its own whole other thing. Like Unreal's got its own file formats and whatnot. It's right? all over the place. But yeah, there's some there's a lot of stuff that's done in Unreal Blu Blueprint, which is a it's a scripting system that's different from programming languages. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's it's essentially programming. It's a visual scripting language, but it's essentially visual programming. <laughs> yeah, it's a way to trick designers into doing our work without them knowing <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, which you know, you don't always want us to do that. A lot. <laughs> there are downsides to letting designers do that kind of work. Yes. What does it give? Give you enough rope to hang yourself. Yeah, with. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Living dangerously. Oh boy. Matthew Edwards. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> oh. Matthew Edwards wants to know: Are we ever bringing back boarding up windows? Brent, uh, would you like to place uh, window boards over all of the windows in the game? Uh, is that you had manually set that up? I uh, that, no, that, isn't, don't that isn't quite how it worked in the original State of Decay, but to make it look as good as it would need to, that, that was kind of the, the, the decision we had to make, was in order to make it look as good as it needed oh. to in this newer, higher fidelity game, it was going to take a lot of manual placement of boards for a feature that a lot of players didn't really use. And so, you know, rather than make Brant just want to die uh, by making him place all of those yeah. things all over the map, uh, we decided, you know what, maybe we can live without this feature for now. Uh, if it becomes super important to add it, you know, consider it in the future. But uh, 
seeing if the game could fly without it seemed like it was worth the the, the cost of Brad's sanity. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, okay, listen, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I was saving, feeling about it. Saving me work was not the reason why. Yeah. That's why I wanted to. Like, I don't okay, care that was that. my motivation. <laughs> I wanted. I would rather have Brant working on things that are more interesting, like more guns in the game, uh, than you know. Because it wouldn't. I mean, yeah, that was not the reason why we. Were. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Brant Brant has an amazing work ethic, and, and, gonna, and, and is offended by the idea that I would try to you know I'm the game. save him work. Yeah. I mean, would have done it. He absolutely would have done it, but it also, there were a lot of different things we needed to do, and that was that was really what it came down to was, there's a lot of things we can do, they all take different amounts of work, yeah. and you know, and we decided that that particular feature, the value that it added to the game, while it was interesting, it wasn't really worth the amount of work it would take, and the yeah. amount of work was really, really significant, and that was, it wasn't just about Brant, you know, it was more just about someone would have to do it, and that's and just, work that wouldn't go into other things. Did people actually engage with it, because it wasn't as used as a lot of people. Yeah. Com compared to guns, you know, which having a variety of guns is something that players Listen, really, was, really gravitate to. There was plenty to. of people to do it. It was, it was a feature that was deemed not essential to the State of Decay 2 experience. Yeah, no, exactly. And so if it had been, you know, if it had been essential, it would have been higher on the priority list. But, exactly. uh, you know, it wasn't essential. And so since there were other things we wanted to do that were more important, we did those instead yes. with, the work, with the work and resources we had available. So with that, uh, I think that, we're about I, done. I just meleeed a whole um, armored column. <laughs> armored. We should have called them columns. We had names for a lot of the other, uh, you know. <laughs> Trademark. Um, you have to pay me for it now. Oh, there we go. We don't. We don't pay you. I know. <laughs> All right. Well. So anyway, um, thank you, uh, Eric, especially for coming by yeah, and chatting with then. us, and thank you, Brand, of course, for playing the game. And uh, thank you, audience, for being here and asking us questions and making this fun. So uh, next week is when this releases on the 26th. It's a free update. So come join us on the stream next week and go check out the game. And with that, uh, let's get out of here. Bye, guys. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Mom Prince, I see you. Hello. Everybody, you guys are great. Love you. And are we on? We're, we're still on, yeah, just okay. for another few seconds. <laughs> I just missed a call from home. Oh. I'm going to pay oh. for that. Oh, oh crap. This is all your fault. Uh, well, everything is.